morning, another day, another wearable test. Today we're doing on the new VanMoof S4, the new affordable bike that's gonna live alongside the more premium now S5. And we're gonna kinda explore today while we test out the bike as per the usual, but first things first. <laughs> Coffee, check. Welcome to Sweet Leaf Coffee Roasters, a coffee shop here in the neighborhood of Greenpoint in Brooklyn, in New York City. And it's actually right next to where my filming studio is. And it's a very chill coffee shop with very like local vibes, like the baristas know the regulars type of thing. It's got a good mix match of decor with industrial vibes. They also make two more unique coffee concoctions here that I kind of crave when I come here. The first being Rocket Fuel, which is cold brewed made with chicory, Vermont maple syrup, and milk. And in my opinion, it's kind of like a take on a New Orleans or a NOLA style coffee. But lately I've been on a kick getting the Voodoo Child, which is a cold brew made of condensed milk and sweet cream. So it's a play on like a Vietnamese style coffee and it sounds sweet, but honestly the coffee is super strong so it, it balances it pretty well. Okay, so the Venmoof S4 and X4. Let's start with the style. At a quick glance you'd have a hard time knowing that it's not the current S5 or A5 or more accurately the S3 or X3. In fact, while riding this bike around before it was announced, I was never really worried that anyone was going to be like, oh is that a new bike? And sure enough, no one batted than I. We have that same sort of iconic at this point maybe, Venmoof straight style frame. The same integrated headlight and tail light, solid feeling hydraulic brakes, comfy seat, fenders, and very similar front hub motor. And that same very minimalistic design that we now expect from the Amsterdam based company, which honestly, I've always really liked. Now looking a little closer though, you can start to see some changes. Firstly, there is no halo rings that are now how you see information like speed, range, and pedal assist levels on the five series. We also don't have the matrix display like the three series had, and we now have two buttons on the handlebars instead of four. Now there is a boost button on the right, we'll get to that in a sec, and a bell button on the left. There is no button under the boost button to cycle through the pedal assist settings compared to the 5 series, and there's no button under the bell to flash the light, which I actually started to like on the 5 series as a way to like more politely tell people to move, or even just tell a car at a four-way stop to go ahead. You'll notice that the chain can be seen on the 4 series compared to the 5, we'll get to why a bit later, and you'll notice there are a lot more color options, or really there are color options, compared to the simply dark or light gray options that the 5 series had. We have evergreen, which is what I have here. Sun beam yellow, purple fog, and foam green. And we have orange accents, and both have the Van Moof logo in orange, except the yellow color, which actually has black accents, it seems. Honestly, the colors are awesome. I love a bright colored piece of tech, and I think purple might be my favorite, personally. Dark green, though, is always a good option if you want to be a little less flashy. Now, the bike comes in two frames, just like the other newer Van Moof bikes. We have an S and an X, like we did on the S3 and the X3. Now, the S5 deviated slightly by having an A frame instead of an X, but the idea of the two frames is the same. The S4 is the more streamlined, slightly taller frame recommended for riders that are 170, 210 centimeters with larger wheels versus the X4, which is the slightly lower frame recommended for riders that are 155, 290 centimeters. Smaller wheels is two pounds lighter and has a bungee corded shelf, we'll call it, in the front. Now I was given the S frame to borrow, which looks sleeker maybe, but the X4 is nice and the added shelf plus the smaller size, I might prefer myself, but up to you. Also the X4 compared to the A5 has a good 88 millimeters lower of a standard over height, just because of how the frame is shaped, which will be good for shorter riders. We are now at the point of Green Point. And this is a park now, but back when the Dutch first settled here, European mariners called this area Green Point thanks to a grassy bluff that sat on this side of the East River. The Dutch eventually settled here in 1638 and took today's neighborhoods of Green Point, Williamsburg, where I live, and Bushwick and called the entire thing Boswick, which roughly means a town in the woods. And it's actually how the neighborhood of Bushwick got its anglicized name. Now back then and for a while, it was mostly wooded land and farm. But eventually in the mid 1800s, this all became known for shipbuilding and what was known as the five black arts, printing, glass and pottery making, oil refining, and iron manufacturing. In fact, the first ironclad warship, the Monitor, was built here. Now the city eventually turned this area into a park in 1942 and has gone through many revamps to get to this point. And honestly, it's a nice place to just kind of sit and look at Manhattan and 
watch the boats go by. All right, and while we're here, let's talk about the ride. Now, firstly, if you're not used to Van Moof bikes, they have auto shifters. So instead of a shifter on the handle that you use to change gears up and down like most bikes, including a lot of electric ones, the bike will go through the gears for you as you ride. This alone takes some getting used to, but once you do, it's actually pretty nice. Now the 5 Series actually has a new Gen 5 version of this system that has three gears and a torque sensor to decide when to shift the gears. So basically it decides how hard you're pushing the pedals and goes, okay, you're pushing hard and slow and we have a gear above this, so let's switch to that. Now the 5 Series with its new system will actually wait for you to come off the pedaling a little and then it'll shift the gears. This is compared to the 3 Series, which sometimes had some weird gear switches during pedaling that were rare, but a little jarring until you kind of got used to those. And the new system supposedly solves that. Now here on the 4 Series though, we don't have that torque sensor, but instead we have only two gears and it uses the same RPM system to decide when to shift that the S3 had. Basically when your tire is spinning at a certain speed. But it does have a new reworked system that does supposedly avoid those weird gear shifts without the more expensive torque sensor. Now that combined with the fact that there's only two gears does seem to mitigate that from happening often and frankly the ride it feels smooth. Now as with all class 1 and class 2 bikes here in the US the speed while being assisted by the electric motor is limited to 20 miles per hour. So what really separates e-bikes is more the torque than the top speed aka how quickly and smoothly they can get you up to speed. Now this bike has four levels of power assist five if you include zero which is just off and of course one through four give you just a bit more push with every pedal stroke than whatever level is below it. And I have to say it does so very smoothly compared to a lot of other e-bikes which is nice. Now we also do have the all-important boost button from the 3 and the 5 series bikes which is essentially Van Moof's clever way to give you more power while pedaling without giving you a throttle which would force the bike into class 2 and give it more guidelines for use in some states and especially in the more strict EU regions. But basically you hold this button down to get the full torque of the motor for a limited time. 59 nanometers on the S4 and X4 which is slightly less than the 68 nanometers of the S5 and A5. It's great for passing people, getting going quickly from a stop and just general shenanigans really. It's fun and I overuse it for sure. The downsides to using it a lot though of course is that it uses more battery. Now Van Moof says the bike has the same range as their other. So 37 miles on the full pedal assist and 87 miles on the lowest pedal assist. Now for all e-bikes these numbers don't matter that much. They're never really that accurate just because it depends very much on how you ride the bike. I do appreciate though that Van Moof has given us a range. So I would suggest taking the lower end of that range and fitting that into your daily use case as a good benchmark for your needs. And of course, most people aren't speed freaks and just hold down the boost button like I do. The one downside is that there is no removable battery. It's removable for maintenance only by Van Moof technicians, apparently. So unlike some bikes where you can park the bike somewhere and then charge the battery inside separately, you will need to bring the entire bike in to plug it in and charge it. Now the bike charges 50% in 1.5 hours and 100% in four and a half, according to Van Moof, which is faster than most electric bikes actually, so at least there's that. Okay, let's grab a bite. And this is Glassery. And it's a lovely Mediterranean spot that opened back in 2013 at the very top of Greenpoint, and Brooklyn for that matter. Any further really and you're in Queens after that. It's on a sort of empty street, and since COVID has had this lovely outdoor area now that they've done a great job of building and lighting. Really. The inside has a similar industrial vibe as the coffee shop we hung out in this morning, and it makes sense given that the space was originally a glass factory, which, surprise, is how it got the name Glassery. The food is meza style or small plates, and it's just great for sharing, especially the bread dipped in anything that it comes with. From labna to eggplant to hummus, even beef tartare. It's so good. Speaking of apps, let's talk about the Van Moof. App. So as mentioned, there is no way to change the pedal assist, also no way to check the battery either on the bike itself, so the app becomes a bit more important. But honestly, you still get away with not using it at all after your initial setup of the bike if you want. You can just leave it on a specific power assist and just don't travel too far between charges. We have the same SB Connect mount on the handlebars from the 5 Series, which is a third party who makes these mounts and co-develops them with Van Moof for their bikes. But you can either buy a phone case from SB Connect with this on it and use that to mount the phone, or you can buy a universal mount and just put that on as well like I have here since I will swap phones too often. Another thing missing from the S5 here is that we don't have a USB port to charge your phone with. Now personally I'm not riding long enough to care but someone might. Now in the app we have basically the same features as the S5 so the same pedal assist options as we've discussed, headlight on and off, but here we don't actually have an option for auto on and off like we do on the S5 which will have it turn on when it gets dark and off when it's not. You have to choose one or the other for the S4. Honestly, I just leave it on. I figure it can't hurt for safety. 
anyway. We also have touch unlock, which allows you to unlock the bike by just pushing a button on the handlebars when your paired phone is connected and close. And you can actually adjust the distance you need it to be for that to trigger. I personally set it to as close as possible, just in case me, you know, sitting inside a restaurant like this while the bike is outside counts as close enough and someone can just right off then. If you don't have your phone though, you can use the backup code, which you input by holding down a button and then it'll give you a sound prompt and you can then tap the button a certain number of times, pause, you'll get another sound, do it again, another sound, and then do it a final time. You set up whatever pattern of pushes you want, like one, two, three, for example. You can also turn the alarm on and off in the app. I always leave this on, we'll get to that in a second. And you can change the measurement units between kilometers and miles. Now lastly in here, you can track rides. And I know so many e-bikes that put these types of features in their apps, and honestly, it just feels useless. I don't know anyone who does not just use Apple Maps or Google Maps when they're riding their bike. Overall though, the app is solid. It connects every time, unlike some other apps I've used for other e-bikes. And the UI is clean and intuitive, really. Now also, I just have to say, it seems really gimmicky at first, but I kind of love it now. And that's the sounds that this thing makes. There's just a fun collection of sounds when you unlock it, lock it. The fact that you can change the bell sound from a single bell ding to like a submarine ping to a ding dong type of sound, it adds a playfulness that I appreciate, honestly. But that now brings us to something that's as iconic as the styling on a van move, and that's the anti-theft system. Firstly, we have our kick lock, which you line up the back hub's lines with the line on the chain guard and tap the button here with your foot, and it'll lock the back tire so someone can't just ride off with the bike. They'd now have to pick it up and carry it. And this is apparently a Gen 4 lock versus the newer Gen 5 lock on the Series 5, but both seem to work very similarly to me. Once that is engaged though, if you have it turned on, the alarm is also engaged. And if someone tries to move the bike, it'll start with a warning that'll progressively get louder until eventually it'll go full temper tantrum and the alarm will start screaming. This also notifies your phone that it's happening, of course, as well. Now, in the case that this does happen, the other bikes have Apple Find My built in. So if you have Apple products, you can see it on a map as it passes by other Apple devices, as well as has GSM tracking. The S4 only has GSM tracking and no Find My, which is kind of odd, but it probably saves them a licensing fee to Apple to use the feature for the bike. But instead, that GSM tracking essentially uses cell towers to triangulate where the bike is generally, which is enough for the bike hunters to get close enough, apparently, to then use their close range Bluetooth scanners to find the bike from there. Bike Hunters, by the way, is a service that VanMoof offers for $395 for three years, and it basically means that if the bike is stolen in that time, they will send their bike hunters out to find it for you, repair it if needed, and return it. And if they can't, they'll replace it. Honestly, as someone who's had their e-bike stolen and lives in a major city like New York, I would automatically buy this with any VanMoof bike. But I'd also probably buy a proper lock for it anyway. Now, if I had the bike longer and it wasn't a secret test bike, maybe we could have let it get stolen and see how that would have worked out. Maybe that's another video. Van Moof claims though that they have a 75% recovery rate, which is crazy when you think about it. And honestly, I've seen videos online where thieves recognize the bike by its style and seem to not even target it because they know the bike. And obviously I wouldn't rely on that as some won't. And again, that bike lock won't really stop anybody from picking up the bike and throwing in the back of the truck. calling it a night, and I just wanna kinda of wrap up my thoughts about the VanMoof S4 and X4. So firstly, VanMoof gets compared to Apple a lot, mostly because of their design, but I wanna make yet another analogy comparing the two companies. The top selling iPhone every year isn't the pro models, you know, the ones with all the bells and whistles. It's the regular model that sacrifices some of that to save a bit of money. The S4 and X4 are kind of the iPhone 14s, and the S5 and the A5, or more like the iPhone 14 Pro. The 4 Series gets 80% of the way there, and yet it's $2,500 compared to the 4,000 of the 5 Series. That is a 38% difference in price, and if we're honest, you probably won't miss much, especially considering most people have not used a 5 Series in the first place. Now, I will say that anytime I ever see anybody considering a Van Moof bike, the price is always their biggest contention. And the thing is, the company has famously now raised the prices of their bikes over time, citing inflation at one point. But when you look closely at the company, they've needed 
needed emergency funding, they've closed a few stores, etc. So not only does a cheaper option just make a lot of sense for the company, it might also be something that they really could use. Now, the one thing I will say though, real quick, that just kind of bothers me a little bit is that even though this is their cheapest option of bike right now, it is a good $500 over the original price of the S3 and X3 when that first launched. And arguably besides a more reliable motor and transmission system, which is definitely important, it isn't a big improvement over that bike. And it even loses some features like that display. But with that said, and also hopefully the fact that they won't raise the price on this bike after the launch, like they did with the S3 and X3, but also they did with the S5 and the A5. They actually raised it a thousand dollars over what it originally sold for. It is still a very solid competitor at that price compared to other bikes around that price. And so I would probably recommend putting it on your short list of bikes to check out within that budget. And there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video, what you think of the bike. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. If you're not already subscribed, please do so and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so that you get notified whenever I do new videos. Also, you can check out the rest of the rear wheel test series. I do these a lot and we have explored a lot of different places while testing a lot of different tech. So check that out if you're interested. As always, I will leave the best price that I can find on the Van Moef S4 and X4 in a link in the description below. And I will try to update that regularly. But now I'm going to get one last ride out of the S4 before I got to give it back. So good night. I've been on a kick of getting truck. I'm in the middle of a construction zone. That's where I am. Oh, there's a seaplane taking off. How you ride them. That is a loud saw right now. All of Greenpoint is a construction zone right now, apparently. Today only. Perfect. Which is faster. Good as a sneeze. <laughs>